Hello learners, welcome to our studio of National Institute of Open Schooling. I am Arvind Singh Negi, your maths teacher. Friends, let us now study classification of sets. First type of sets that we are going to take is finite sets and infinite sets. A finite set is a set which includes finite number of elements. Its name is suggesting infinite sets will have infinite number of elements only. For example, so if we talk about the set of students of your class, since we can count the number of students, the number of students will obviously be a finite number. So it will form a finite set. If we talk about natural numbers, we all know that natural numbers are uncountable. We can't count the natural numbers. So, the set of natural number will be an infinite set. The second category of sets that we are having is empty set or null set. This category is also known as wide set, a set with no element. Its name is suggesting empty set means a set with no element. So, in this type of set, we will be having only the brackets, curly brackets, which will include no element. For example, x such that x is a number greater than 5, but less than 3. We all know that there is no such number possible, which is greater than 5 and less than 3. So, this set will include no element. So, it will form an empty set. So, empty set is also called null set or void set and it is denoted by the symbol phi. Next is singleton set. Now the meaning of singleton set is also very much clear from its name. A singleton set includes one element only. For example, set of even prime number. Now we all know that there is only one number possible which is even as well as prime and this number is 2. 2 is the only number which is even as well as prime. So, this set will include only one element. So, it is a singleton set. Next, we are having our equal sets and equivalent sets. Friends, equal sets are the sets which are having all the elements equal to each other. For example, suppose we are having a set A which are having elements 1, 2, Another set B having elements 2, 3, 1. Now, since while writing a set, the order of elements does not matter. So, here set A and set B both are having 3, 3 elements which are equal to each other. So, these two sets will be equal sets. And if you talk about equivalent sets, Equivalent sets are the sets which are having equal number of elements, but the elements will be different. They will be equal only in their numbers. For example, a set C which is equal to the set containing elements A, B, C. Set D having elements X, Y, Z. These two sets C and D both are having 3, 3 elements each, but the elements are different. So, these two sets will not be equal, but they will be equivalent sets. So, what we found in first example set A and set B have same elements. So, set A will be written equal to set B. While in example second, the elements of C and D are different, but they are equal only in their number. So, C and D are equivalent sets and are written as A equivalent to B. Friends, these two words seems to be similar, but actually they are different. Equal sets will have all the elements equal to each other, but equivalent sets will have only the number of elements equal to each other. 
next we are having disjoint sets. Two sets are said to be disjoint if they do not have any common element. It means if you are having two sets and none of their element is common, such sets will be disjoint sets. For example, A equal to 1, 2, 3, B equal to A, B, C. Now, these two sets are having no element in common. So, these two sets will be disjoint sets. We are having one more definition here friend, subset. Its name is suggesting its definition. A set is said to be a subset of another set B if all the elements of A are contained in the set B. It means whenever a set is a part of another set, part means all the elements of the set are present in some another set, then the first set will be called the subset of the second set. Let us make it more clear with an example. For example, set A is equal to A, B and C and another set B is having elements A, B, C, D and E. What we are observing here, all the elements of the set A, which are A, B and C are present in set B. So, it means A will be the subset of the set B and it is denoted by the symbol A subset B. The next definition that we are having is power set. It is a set containing all the possible subsets of a given set, which means we try to find out all the possible subsets of a given set and we will write it in the form of a set. It means we are going to separate these subsets with the help of commas and we are going to include all the subsets within curly brackets so that it will form a set. Such a set which will include all the possible subsets will be called the power set. For example, set A equal to a set which is having elements A and B. Then the set B which will include phi, phi means null set, set A, set B and a set containing A, B. These four are the possible subsets of the set A. So, this set B will be the power set of set A and we denote the power set by P A. So, here since B is representing the power set of the set A, it will be equal to P A because P A represents the power set of A and here B is the power set of A. So, B will be equal to P A. Let us take one more definition. Universal set. The meaning of universal set is a set containing all the elements of a given number of sets is called the universal set of those sets, which means if we are having a given number of sets, then a set that will contain all the elements of the given number of sets will be the universal set of those sets. Let us make it more clear with this example. Suppose we are having set A equal to a set which is having elements A, B, C, set B having elements E, H and set C having elements 1, 7, 9 and we want to find the universal set of this set. So, we should be having a set which should be containing all the elements of these three sets. 
So, if we represent this universal set by u, this set will include the elements a, b, c, e, h, 1, 7, 9. So, a universal set contains all the elements of a given number of sets. Let us take one more example. We know that the set of natural number is represented by the symbol n. First set that we are having is a set of natural number. Second set we have taken z, the set of integers. And one more set we have taken, which is q, the set of rational numbers. And we want to find the universal set of these three sets. So, this universal set should be including all the natural numbers, all the integers, as well as all the rational numbers. So, if you talk about the set of real numbers, set of real number includes all the rational numbers, all the natural numbers, all the integers. So, the set of real numbers can be taken as universal set of these three sets, because it includes all these three sets. So, this was all about sets friends. For queries, you can log on to our website, which is www.nios.ac.in. Thank you and have a nice day. Keep on watching us.